Hello and welcome to this tutorial of the catamaran from Make It. I am Stefan. This is how it's going to look when it's all done. And this is the hover bit that we're gonna disassemble. We're gonna start by unscrewing and unplugging the hover bit so that we can move everything over to the catamaran. And for that you need a standard Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew the bolts from the cardboard, you might need a 5.5mm socket wrench. Remember that even though you're unscrewing everything from the hover bit, you can still use it again, so be careful when disassembling so that you don't damage it. When you're done unscrewing all the bolts and nuts from the cardboard, the next thing to do is to remove the bottom engine. You only need the top engine since we have no use for upforce for our catamaran. By the way, the back bolt doesn't have to go off the plywood, it might as well just stay there. Simply unplug the propeller and the engine and keep them safe in a small box or a bag, then we're ready for the next step. For this you need a small zip bag like the one on the screen now and a carpet knife. This is to protect the electronic parts if something were to happen when the catamaran is in the water. Make sure that the battery is plugged into the Airbit card, then insert it into the zip bag. When everything is inside the zip bag and at the correct position, which is approximately 2.5 cm from the actual locking mechanism of the bag, push the white balls from the air bit through the zip bag. Then take your carpet knife and cut a small hole in between the battery and the air bit card. This is to make room for the engine cable. When cutting this hole, make sure it's not too big, because if it is, water might slip through. If you're not sure, I do recommend to tape over the hole. Insert the bolts into the hole at the front and back of the base of the plywood. If you haven't removed the back bolt from earlier, just let it stay where it is. Attach the zip bag onto the plywood base and screw it in place. If you want to get a hold of the tool I was using, I will leave a link in the description to a 3D print file that you can get for free. Then it's time to use the glue gun, and if you don't have one of those, you can use super glue or contact adhesive glue.
Since the glue from the glue gun is hot, you do not have a lot of time after applying the glue onto the pontoons, so it will become cold and not usable. So make sure you have everything in the correct position before applying the glue so that it is easy to attach the plywood for the catamaran onto the pontoons. Make sure that the plywood for the catamaran is glued in place by pressing the plywood onto the pontoons. After applying the glue gun, please check if the pontoons is waterproof. By that I mean place it into a box full of water and check if there is any air bubbles around the pontoons. If there is none, you're good to go. And now it's time to screw the rest in place and to do that you need the rest of the bolts, spacers, a socket wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Just to make sure you see where the spacer is going, I laid them onto the plywood, but it is easier to just hold the frame with the bolts upside down, then put the spacers onto the bolts and then screw the catamaran in place. Make sure that the cable from the servo is going underneath the plywood to the opposite side of the battery before screwing the frame onto the catamaran. Attach the front and back nuts and screw them in place. Then the two nuts for the remaining bolts. Attach the cable from the servo into the three pins on the opposite side of the battery to the airbit card. Then close the zip bag and stuff it underneath the frame. Then attach the cable from the engine into the slot nearest to the engine between the battery and the airbit card. And 
and that's basically what you have to do before you can drive the catamaran in the water. I do recommend to tape the sail so that the cardboard is somehow waterproof, but it's not something you have to do even though I recommend it. You will however see that I've done so in the upcoming clips. The same remote controller you have used for the hoverbeat is the same remote you can use for the catamaran. Since you have just switched from the hoverbeat to the catamaran, there is no need for another remote controller since the coding is the same. To see if everything works, turn on the catamaran, then the remote controller. Press A and B at the same time and if the catamaran responds to what you do, it all works as it should. Now, let's go to a small lake and see how it works. Before you put the catamaran into the water, turn it on. Then the remote controller. Since water has an effect to the signals from the remote controller, the range in which the signal can travel is approximately 20 meters. Place the catamaran into the water, press A and B at the same time, press B for more throttle and A for less. And to turn everything off, press A and B at the same time or shake the remote. You steer the catamaran the same way you steer the hover bit by tilting the remote to the side you want it to go. When you're done driving, make sure you clean and dry the catamaran from any dirt and water. Always keep an eye on the water level. This is very important because if the water level raises higher than it was when you first placed it in the water, that usually means that there's a hole in the pontoons and it takes in water. And if that does happen to you, make sure to drive the catamaran into the shore immediately. Water should never hit the plywood, so be careful when driving fast or if there is waves and or windy conditions. And here we are. I hope this was an informative video and that you learned how to go from the hover bit and to create the catamaran. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching. It's time to build. Enjoy!